All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, Bahashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is the name of the beloved, only begotten Son, on whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His real name is Yahweh Shai. That is the name that the apostles called on as he was present with them. And that is the name that the angels are calling on right now as he is sitting on the right hand side of his father, which is in heaven. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto your elect across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch coming to you all with another lesson through the spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And I want to talk about something here very briefly. I don't intend on making this long at all. This is an in transit as I'm on my way home from work. But uh, I just want to talk about something that had hit my spirit. Uh, this past weekend, the Apostle Raka was just having a conversation with a, with a handful of us. And he was just talking to us as pertaining to um, relationships between a father and their child. And for those of us that are within this knowledge, that are within the know, and I'm going to say this too before I even continue on that part. There's a lot of us that are within this faith, a lot more people that are being added unto the church daily. And a lot of us that came unto this truth, came unto the truth with daddy issues. It might have been a broken home. Your father might not have been all the way there within your life. Your father might have been in jail whatever the circumstances whatever the situation might be he might not have been the best father you know i mean the, the list goes on and on and I'll, I'll say this too i'm grateful to come from a household where my father was there as i was a youth as i got older he wasn't in the picture as, no, uh, uh, um, as much but when it comes to being a young child learning basic practical information you know, getting me through life, school, certain things. My father was there and my father's still alive right now, you know. But um, all in all, just again, going to, just into the generality of things, the hard pill to swallow or the strong truth is the fact that the majority of us really don't have relationships with our father. And we can blame the curses for that because the curses goes into that. You know how a man will have an hateful eye toward, you know, his, his children, his woman, and vice versa. So unfortunately, with us being Israelites, namely of the Southern Kingdom too, because Southern Kingdom usually deals with the dysfunctional family issue, while the Northern Kingdom deals with other things. Ultimately, we're all under the curses still, and we're not going to be completely lifted and absolved from those curses until our Lord Yahweh Shai comes back. And that's when things are going to be straight and in order. But in the meantime, as we're under this grace, as we're under grace, waiting to receive the kingdom, waiting to receive a new body, there's still a list of duties that we have to fulfill as we're here. There's still laws and such that we have to fulfill. We know that we can't keep all the laws, but we can keep, you know, what we can keep to the best of our ability. And when you read it in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, it goes into honoring thy father and honoring thy mother and that is in the ten commandments and that's something those of us that are israelites really haven't had too much of an opportunity to exercise as we were in the world brought up under the curses fathers not in our lives and such and that's what i was going to say earlier too you can blame esau for that of course yeah the curses were there but the lord put esau in the way all right he used esau as a whipping stick to give those curses or feed these curses to us all right so again we can blame esau for that because it was part of his program and such to take the father out of the picture you even read it in the book of sirach the 30th chapter i believe the third verse where it says when a man teaches his son it grieves the enemy so it was a very subtle very crafty thing to do in order to keep the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American man down and away from the Heavenly Father. And one way that Esau did that was setting up certain programs 
to force the father out of the picture. All right, whether it be the Section 8 program where, you know, you have these single mothers that are there raising up children. And, and a lot of these programs and such, I believe it's Section 8. If you have a man living in that house, they're not going to receive the same benefits or the free housing, you know, that they would receive if a man wasn't in the picture. So that's just one example out of many examples to show you how crafty this devil is because a father is very important in the life of their child. And that circles right back around to what I'm saying. Those of us that are in this knowledge and this truth, a lot of us haven't really experienced that father figure. Hell, a lot of us have turned into those father figures. We've been made fathers into the fatherless, as the scripture said. But just generally, knowing this truth and having this understanding, if you have a great relationship with your father or you don't have a relationship with your father at all, or if it's mediocre, you still don't want to talk down about your father. You don't want to have anything negative to say about your father. All right. Now, of course, you know, granted, you might not have the best relationship with him right now. He might have came against you in this truth. He might have said particular things here and there. And there's certain things that can grieve you. All right. Certain things that can grieve you. Best believe it happens. And I'm pretty sure a large portion of you all that are listening to this lesson understand because you're dealing with that. But you still don't want to use it as an excuse to talk down to your father or curse your father or whatever the case is. Because the scriptures, the Lord, as it's written in the scriptures, does not take kindly to that at all. The Lord can kill you for talking down to your father and and talking down on your mother. But as the scriptures say, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this precept out too. But the scriptures say the curse of the mother rooteth out foundation so we've experienced that we've experienced the curse of the mother coming from a single mother household where she has to play the role as the mom or the dad or she ran your father off or whatever the case might be the majority of us have experienced that the curse of the mother that root out foundation but knowing that you still want to make sure that you keep that balanced relationship with your uh, or you know i'd rather say it like this you still want to make sure that when it comes to what you say outwardly or how you feel about them you want to make sure you keep that as balanced as possible because the lord used them as vessels to bring forth your spirit that you're in and what i mean by that of course the lord used them to get to, to come together all right the holy spirit was present and you were born so i'd rather say it like this the lord used them to bring forth the vessel but there's a spirit within this vessel that comes from the heavens and the lord used them to come together to give birth to you and who you are today so for those of you all that are newer coming in this faith for those of you all that had this bitterness that's toward your father it behoove you to get rid of that because it'll make life and your growth your walk in this truth a hell of a lot easier you don't want to be that guy that's out here that still has a grudge toward your father and as we was talking to the Apostle Rakah, he also made mention going into this. And if you all haven't heard it yet, this is a disclaimer coming from up top. If for those of you all that are in this truth and you have a bitterness towards your father and that surfaces to the camp, that surfaces, that's grounds to getting kicked out the camp. All right. And that ain't just coming from here. That's coming from up top. And more so, that's also grounds to be eliminated from existence by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So if he, if your father comes up against the truth, that's one thing. You still keep it respectable. All right. You still keep that love towards your father. You might not talk to your father. You know, I haven't talked to my father in a few years. It's times I reach out to him to see how he's doing. He might not respond. You know, but it's still, it's, it's still you. I try. You know, just to keep that covering from the Lord. But again, you know, if he comes up and bucks up against you and such, you can keep it at that arm's distance, but you don't want to get to the point where you speak derogatory things about him, whether it's toward him directly or whether it's at hominem, whether he's not there because the Lord sees it and the angels see it. All right. And you're breaking the commandment when you do that out of the Ten Commandments. OK, so I'm going to read some of this here in the book of Sirach, the third chapter. And it's also called Ecclesiasticus, and this is going to be in the Apocrypha. So this is the book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3. And really the whole 
first half of this chapter really goes in to the relationship you're supposed to have with your father and your mother and how a blessing comes from that if you handle them the right way. But I'm going to jump straight down to the point of something that stood out to me and also which is why I wanted to do this lesson. You know what? I can actually start at the eighth verse. And it reads, Honor thy father and thy mother, both in word and in deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. And the scriptures also says, if you do something for somebody and they don't have the power to pay you, you don't want to hound them for it because eventually if they don't have the power to pay you, they'll either pay you later or the payment will come from the Heavenly Father. So your father might not be in the picture. Your mother might be bitter toward you from this truth. Whatever the case might be, there's still a reward that comes to you for honoring them. If your father or your mother asks you to do something and it's not allowing you to go off, best bet is doing it. Best bet is doing it because only a blessing will come from that. Okay, and again, this is mainly towards you younger, you younger um, cats that's in here, younger brothers, you younger sisters that are within brothers and sisters in general. But the reason why I'm putting emphasis on younger brothers and younger sisters because this is stuff that you might not have known. All right, you might have a bitterness towards your father. You might not have thorough understanding on these precepts pertaining to the relationship of parents and a child. That bitterness might still be there because you've came freshly from the world. So that's why I'm putting emphasis on you younger believers that are within, you young men. All right. Now, when you continue in verse nine, it says, for the blessing of the father establishes the houses of the children, but the curse of the mother rooted thou foundation. And that was what I quoted earlier. All right. And that's why we're in the predicament. A lot of us are in the predicament that we're in right now. Single mother households. You got the Israelite child. That's a complete imbecile. That's completely degenerate. A lot of that is due to you living and being brought up in a single mother household, bringing different men in the house. You got a different uncle every three months. You know, I know back when I was younger, you know, what I'm saying you would call somebody if it's your mom's friend, Mr. Such and such or uncle such and such. You know, that way it wouldn't be too awkward, you know, case in point, and, you know, calling them uncle. That is actually awkward within itself. You think about it, but that's neither here nor there. But all that stems from the curse of the mother. And that's what roots out foundation. That's why you have a lot of uh, young men that are out here in these streets acting how they act, doing how they do. It's because they're raised up. They were raised up with their mother. So they act like their mother in a manly way, if that makes sense. They're men. So they're going to be men. But they're going to carry on those traits that they've adopted from their mother. And that comes from the curse of of the mother being brought up in that single parent household, that single mother household. All right. But you knowing that you still don't disrespect your mother. Now let's continue in verse 10 glory, not in the dishonor of thy father for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. So if your father wasn't in the picture, all right, or if he might've been deadbeat, whatever the case is, you don't want to glory and boast in that and talk down on that. The scriptures right here clearly tells you that that's not good. To talk about that and quite frankly it's really none of your business if you have just this bitterness towards your father you know and you're hearing all these things from your mother about him when he was younger really it's none of your business to even talk about it because you don't know what type of shit he was dealing with as he was with your mother you don't know if your mother was being a demon and ran him out of the way there's a lot of cases where they'll be charged all this child support and it's to the point where bitterness comes up seeing you because it might not necessarily be you, but the mother that's raising you. You really don't know the situations and the circumstances. So best bet is really not to talk down on your father, especially if he wasn't in the picture, if he wasn't there, or if he might have left, or if he might have been super stern and rough, whatever the case is. All right. Again, the Lord doesn't take too kindly of that. He's not too fond of that at all. He's not really, I don't want to say too fond of that. He's not fond of that, period. And again, that can get you eliminated from existence. You can get put to death for having this mentality about your father. Now, let's continue in verse 11. It says, for the glory of a man is from the honor of his father and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to her children. All right. So the glory of you, as the scriptures say, is how you honor your father. 
because how you honor your father is a reflection of really how you're supposed to honor the father of spirits, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and how you honor the different men that are around you, apostles and elders on down. And if you treat the apostles and elders in such a way of respect, you need to treat your father in the same exact way. The same exact way, even if he doesn't agree with the truth. If you haven't talked to him in a long time, that's one thing. That's one thing. But if he still tries to stay in your life and he not he might not have been around there, he around there so much, but he's trying, you show that man some damn respect. So what if he eats pork, whatever the case is? You don't know the Lord could use you to wake up your father in the last thing. We just really don't know. Now let's continue in verse 12. My son, help thy father in his age and grieve him not as long as he liveth. And this is, there's plenty of scriptures that goes into how we're supposed to treat our father, treat our mother and such. And there's a lot of times, you, you know, especially being younger in this faith, you're on fire on precepts, bringing it out. But there's still a lot of precepts that still have to be applied as you come in. You got younger men that's on fire bringing out precepts, but you also have young men that look at their father and talk shit about their father. Knowing the precepts, which shows you what's one thing knowing the precepts, it's another thing living the precepts. All right. So we just want to make sure us being believers, us being within this household of faith. We want to make sure that we're not doing these things to dishonor the Heavenly Father. And again, if you don't have really a relationship like that with your father, that's one thing. If he comes up against the truth and scoffs against the truth, that's one thing. If the Spirit of the Lord is on you to keep your distance, that's understandable. But you don't want to slander your father and speak illy against your father. Because the Lord sees these things. All right, and only a blessing comes from still keeping your composure and keeping that respect, you know. And the Spirit was on me to talk about that because one thing that we do know by default, we know this is going on. You know what I'm saying? It's only inevitable. Young individuals, and I keep saying young, but I'm young myself, so I don't even mean it like that. But I'd rather say younger individuals coming to the faith, you're on fire, but your father wasn't there. So you came up having daddy issues and you bring those daddy issues into the truth. A lot of these individuals that's coming against the truth and scoffing and mocking and they were good one moment and they run away and start talking shit is because they have daddy issues. It's a strong chance that the father is not in those individuals life and it's also a strong chance that they talk shit about their fathers too. You know, we don't want to be of that. Okay, so knowing this, we want to make sure that we at least keep this to the best of our ability. All right, and honor your father and your mother as the scriptures say. So I'm going to end it off there. Lord's willingness is edifying. I want to say all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash, double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots and truth. I also wanted to say this too, while it was on my mind, something I thought about after I closed the lesson now. But ultimately, when you read this chapter, Especially the beginning of it Going into the relationship Or how you treat Your father and your mother You look at that On how the Lord can help you out in Jacob's trouble 